This is Elise Paquette, an up-and-coming singer-songwriter from right here in Nanaimo who comes by her talent naturally, and we'll have more with her later on in the show. On the show today, we are celebrating the New Year Chinese style, and we're going to be giving you some very helpful tips that you can use to help keep that New Year's resolution, if indeed you've even made one. We're also brightening up these dull and dreary January days. Turley's Florist is here. We're thrilled to have Marianne Turley on set with us today. We're also going to be profiling all five of Nanaimo's Rotary Clubs. All that and Peter Jack Rainbird. He's a soundscape composer who's making quite a name for himself here on Vancouver Island, as if Peter Jack Rainbird wasn't name enough. All that and more coming up in the next hour. This is the show. It's Thursday, January 5th, and we are live. so relaxing and sounds so nice just what we need we're back with our first live show since early december we were a little frazzled but peter jack rainbird has just kind of gone so it feels great thank you for that if that sound is familiar to you and you've been fortunate enough to spend some time at the grotto spa at the tynamara resort in parksville he's that guy that you hear when you're enjoying your relaxation uh, service at the spa and also he uh, hangs out at the parksville community park underneath the gazebo just uh spreading his music into the world and we'll have more with peter jack rainbird later in the show it's a brand new year and with it perhaps you have committed to yourself in making a better life for yourself. Maybe uh, sort of upping the quality of your life and for many people that involves a New Year's resolution through vowing to break a bad habit or on the other side uh, vowing to start a good habit. Quitting smoking, eating more healthy, not eating junk food, exercising, whatever it might be. Dr. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is a family physician with a special interest in preventative medicine and behavior change. You're also the director of the Central Island Smoking Intervention Clinic. Dr. P, easier to say. We're going to get right to the core of it. When it, people make a New Year's resolution, no matter what it is, they're after one thing, really. And, that, and that's upping the quality of their life. It's about living better. Yeah. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you, too. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, we're always wanting to get better. There's just a, a human, it's a human condition, always trying to do better and New Year's is always that good time to reflect at the end of the year and thinking of the year ahead to say hmm what could I do better and as said people make these New Year's resolutions and for good intentions but sometimes they do go astray actually I think I've, I've read somewhere that only about 12 percent of people are successful in their New Year's resolution and it's always around habits usually if, if smoking is a habit that you want to quit um, or developing a new habit of exercise. Let's use smoking as an example. What is, is there one key thing to keep in mind if, if someone's New Year's resolution involves stopping something yeah, like no, smoking? Great question. And the biggest thing here is, is that 
uh, New Year's resolutions themselves can be very discouraging. If you sort of go on the, later in January, you'll find there's a, the most depressing day of the year right. because a lot of these resolutions do go astray and then we've got the dark days of January. So encouraging people to make these positive changes, there's actually a day that they've shifted. Uh, it's called Weedless Wednesday, just for smoking to take that as an mm -hmm. example. So it's the third Wednesday of January. Which takes us to the 18th. Exactly. And uh, it's National Non-Smoking Week here in Canada. And so the biggest thing is for any oh. change of behavior, whether it's increasing exercising, <laughs> eating healthier, break it down into small doable pieces. So take a day. I mean, that, that would be the best challenge to any, any habit one wants to change, whether it's you know, eating unhealthy or using their smartphone too much, you know, yeah. those type of things. Put it away for a day. See how you do. Yeah. And as I said, if you find that you're always going back to it, then maybe there is a problem. A whole day? What about just like an hour? Or can start, or, or start small. Start small. Like small, uh, doable pieces and then building on that. Are all habits a form of, of an addiction? <laughs> I mean, the medical part of it all, uh, addiction versus habit. I mean, we, we do say tobacco addiction or smoking is not a habit. Um, right. There's the soft addictions out there. I okay. mean, again, smartphone usage, internet usage, retail television. Retail therapy, yeah, shopping. Yeah, retail therapy, shopping addiction. I mean, those are called soft addictions. In our medical textbooks, we may not call them true hardcore addictions, but mm -hmm. any habit that starts to impair your social functioning, i.e. family and other relationships, um, or has occupational issues, i.e. money, you know, you start to have money problems. So those habits that impair those aspects then can be called an addiction if you want to softly call it that term. Okay. We had the halftime cue already. I'm going to um, get right to your blog. You've got a great video uh, by Dr. Mike Evans that you, you fully endorse and agree with some of the messages put out in that video. And one of the things that struck me in watching it is that out of 24 hours a day, say, say your news resolution is to get more exercise and be more active, lose weight, um, to feel better mentally, out of 24 hours, if you can not sit or sleep for 23 and a half of those, then you're doing pretty good. Yeah, that's or, 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 or the opposite the way, way around. around. Okay, so <laughs> so you can sleep and sit for 23, for 23 and a half and hours, hours a, day, a day, but just for a half an hour, as his as his video says, right. um, is to try and get some exercise, like uh, walking. I mean, the benefits of daily activity, a half an hour a day, is it, huge. Yeah, and that's that would be my challenge to viewers in the sense that don't quit smoking, don't lose weight. Don't eat healthier. <laughs> Tell okay, me no. I'm talking to light up right now. To, don't don't even change your cell phone usage. But why don't you go out and try and do a half an hour of exercise daily, five days a week? Right. That's all. And it could be in three ten minute increments. You it bet. Could be you bet. Small and steady, and and that's yeah. the thing that the video shows. It's on the blog and it's on YouTube. It's twenty three and a half hours. Uh, yeah. I forget the full the full term, but you can if you put twenty three and a half hours in, and it's a nine minute video that just shows how beneficial, it's better than any pill a doctor can give patients when it comes to mm -hmm. blood pressure, depression, all these ailments that we seem to always want to find it in a pill. Well, exercise is medicine. So I think that's the sort of the New Year's message is, you know, look at, look at how active you are and maybe try and ramp that up. Yes, look at those other activities that you might be doing that might be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. But as said, if you add exercise, you will probably find the other things following. Okay, and just in, in closing, yeah. a little bit is really better than none. The incremental benefits of a small amount, you don't have to go full out. You don't have to, you know, sweat it out five days a week on, on a spin or anything yes, like that. It's start at five minutes a day yeah. for five days a week. I mean, the biggest thing is to let viewers know that you're not alone. In the community, there's so much help out there, whether it's your family doctor, healthcare mm -hmm. practitioner, um, there's so many resources. So if you have something you have issues with or, or problems with, feel, you know, Talk to family, friends, okay. see your healthcare professional. Dr. Puerto Rico, thank you so much. And I'll encourage viewers to visit your blog. Yes. And please. good luck and continue doing the good work that you're doing in this community. Um, I hear you're developing a slight iPhone uh, ailment. I'm, I'm working on you're it. You're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm full bore, and I'll, I'll put it down for a few hours. We'll have an day. intervention <laughs> clinic for you next year. Okay. Um, we are uh, in entering now the dark and dreary, drab days of January. And to brighten some things up, brighten things up in your home, uh, Marianne Turley from Turley's Florist is here.
Thanks, Kate. Uh, here with me is Mary Ann. And yes, it is quite depressing out there with all the rain we have. And what better to, you know, to brighten up our days than with Mary Ann. Um, and she's going to teach us how to do a bit of a, a, a flower arrangement. Absolutely. It's wonderful to be here. You know, we always, we love flowers. So that's what we like to share with everybody else. So we've brought, I've brought two different design styles today. Um, one is um, just sort of a nice round design and the other one is a low design um, this and I'm going to do the design just to show you how we do it it's really very easy um, it's one of the oldest way of designing flowers that was done hundreds and hundreds of years ago so basically the greens are put into a vase they're crisscrossed and they're actually the base to hold the flowers in place and then we start putting flowers in as was done there so and it is, is it that easy that you just go and just Absolutely. place it in like that? Okay. Absolutely. So, you know, we, we take it into our hands. So okay. when we first start... So there's no sorting we, or anything? Uh, well, sort of a little bit, okay. right? So we, we try to put the heavier greens into the center and especially greens as well. Okay. That, um, that basically are branched because they will hold our flowers. So we don't need to use the foam or anything else. Okay. And whoops, and oh. see that, that <laughs> happened. That's right. All right. So... Um, and of course we have floral dessert preservative in the water. Floral preservative does make flowers last longer. So I've cut, I've tried to cut my flowers ahead of time. So, and I'm basically placing them crisscross so that they will then form a crisscross and they'll hold each other in place. So I'm and Marianne, I'm just wondering when you cut your flowers, just mm -hmm. so they know the viewers know at home, mm -hmm. do you just want the, the, the stems just to be a little bit higher above the greens for the, the type of things um, that you're choosing? Most of the time, that is the way to do it. Okay. You know, if you have your greens up too high, you can't see the flowers right. anymore. So you really do want to focus on the flowers. But, you know, nowadays, they're whatever you like <laughs> and you enjoy doing just do the design that you would like. And have so, fun doing it, right? It's absolutely. <laughs> that, you know, that's just, and I was just looking at this bucket and I thought, yeah, but it does turn into that after. So when, when you're doing it and it doesn't take very long. So um, I'm just placing, and this is sort of like a loose open type design. Um, and these Alstroemeria, these Gerbera, these um, tulips are actually grown right here in BC in the oh. Fraser Valley and, and the Gerbers are actually grown in uh, in Victoria. So local, so even better. Absolutely. Yay. Local is good. We love it. And it's, yeah, it's a really good product. And there's a huge flower growing industry in the Fraser Valley. So nice. Yeah. And now, long lasting flowers, are these like uh, long lasting flowers or? Uh, what? Most of these are. Okay. Uh, tulips, of course, are not. The, um, but, you know, that's sort of the beauty of some of these flowers. You know, people say, oh, I don't want carnations, they last too long. So, you know, so then the alternative is the Gerber. And the Gerbers actually last really well, too. You know, a good week. Um, the Alstroemeria are really long lasting. Two weeks, beautiful freesia. They're becoming very popular again. Nice. So some of the old-fashioned flowers are coming back into style. And so. you know one thing I just noticed that I just mm -hmm. learned from you today mm -hmm. is the tulips because I love tulips but you've cut it so it's just mm -hmm. above the um, the vase and that's how it lasts because if you have them too high they get right. droopy and a little bit yeah. messy so. Tulips will always grow about good. two inches, one to two inches when you put them in water. So um, yeah when you use them in a design make sure you'll look for that. <laughs> I'm famous for that. They Absolutely. Like stick yeah. high and they, totally. Yes. Yeah. That's good. All right. So I'm just going to put a few more And this is in. quick too. This is Absolutely. something that we all can do at home. Totally. So the secret is if you're, you know, if you're running out of time, if you have to do it for a party, uh, really do try and cut your flowers ahead of time to about the same length and that's the easiest way of doing it. So um, then you don't have to cut each one. Perfect. So, so that's what, we, you know, folks at home, you can just <laughs> go to Turley's here and you can just pick your own flowers and then just arrange yes. them yourself at home. Totally. That way you're doing something that's fun Absolutely. and you're, as you're yes. entertaining that's and right. get you more in the mood. Yeah. Are we going to add these or no? Oh, or? absolutely. Totally. We have a couple more. We have, <laughs> okay, we have more we have time. More time. Just make more, um, add more yeah. flowers. Yeah. Nice. There you go. And also always make sure that you keep your flowers really well watered. Yes. Flowers drink a lot. And so you always have to make sure that they have enough water. A vase should always be very high because the water pressure of the water depths, so the deeper the water, the higher the water pressure, the more water pressure to push the water up into the flower heads. Okay, good. I just want to make sure our cameraman gets oh, right, that. Yes, it's course. just so pretty. Okay, there you go. Okay, and we'll just, the tulips have stems that can snap very easily. So we'll just see how, how this will work. 
Well, no. perfect. Well, thank you so much, Marianne. If you're ever in the need for flowers, well, there's Marianne and Jim at Turley's. You've been making Absolutely. our city beautiful for the, for the <laughs> last 40 years. Thanks again for coming in and teaching thank us how you. to fl arrange flowers here. We will be back after this break. Welcome back to the show. What show? The show. Only on Shaw TV. The show. Only you on are Shaw watching TV. the show right here on Shaw TV, Channel 4 in Nanaimo. We are broadcasting live if you're watching on Thursday, January 5th, and we have repeats, air, repeating air dates taking us through until January the 17th. The Rotary Clubs are on a mission to raise awareness in our community. There are five clubs in the Harbor City doing wonderful things on a local level. On an international level, they're this close, not this close, this close to eradicating polio worldwide. And we're dedicating a good portion of our show today to the five clubs that are Rotary in Nanaimo. We're gonna kick things off with Bob Fenty and Jeet Manhas. Uh, now for anyone who still doesn't know what Rotary is, Bob, let's start with you. What is Rotary? Rot Rotary is probably the, the very first service club that was started in the world back in 1905 by a gentleman by the name of Paul Harris in Chicago and it's grown to 32,000 clubs in the world and about 2.8 million Rotarians worldwide. Now the objective of Rotary is not to, which I at first thought years ago, was to um, network on a business level. Not You're not all. there to not market all. yourself and, and make money personally no. for your business. What are, what are there, you there to we're do? We're there to help other people, to, to, to help local people, to help schools, and, and internationally as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of projects that we get involved in. Example, uh, if we go to Sunyani in Ghana, where uh, the five clubs locally have spent a, a considerable sum of money developing the school, uh, putting a security sensor on the school, and, mm -hmm. and more recently now, we'll be looking at uh, building some latrines and showers for the downtown because the city of Sunyani was so impressed with what we did for the school they now want us to do more for them down there now so I, that that's, that's happening I didn't prep you for this question but how <laughs> do you choose where to put your your effort your time your fundraising successes how it do you just, choose a it, project it sort of happens with uh, through a district governor who, who we have uh, every district in the world mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, hundreds of different different districts and they would get together with a fellow uh, district governor and say we would like to have uh, a new well or we would like to have a school or someone who's traveling mm -hmm. visiting ad another country and sees a, a need for the school in Sunyani to be upgraded and developed. We're not into buildings, we're, we're more into developing uh, the equipment, the, the computers, the whiteboards that we've supplied, mm -hmm. latrines that we did for the school in Sunyani. Uh, locally, if we look at locally, uh, I, a great deal of pleasure I get out of uh, giving the kids at Bayview School a turkey lunch the mm -hmm. last Wednesday before they leave for Christmas holidays. Mm -hmm. A lot of those kids will never get a turkey dinner. Mm -hmm. And 220 kids were served a turkey dinner in an hour. And wow. it was just unbelievable to see the look on their faces. It just, it's so rewarding. It really is. Jake's that, sitting here, <laughs> and I, I know you love this, Bob, and ever since I've moved to Nanaimo, you and Rotary have been synonymous to me, so I, I do appreciate it. I know you work really hard, and that Rotary is very, very close to your heart. It is. Put a lot of time into it. G, you're president of the Oceanside. Nanaimo Oceanside. Nanaimo Oceanside Rotary Club. Now, 32,000 chapters of Rotary in the world, five in Nanaimo. Oceanside is one of them. Um, and you're sort of spearheading an awareness campaign coming up well, in February? Yeah, what we're doing is basically kicking off Rotary Week in Nanaimo. All the five clubs got together and came up with this idea. And the kickoff is on Thursday, February the 23rd. So the whole week from 23rd to March 1st is Rotary Week in Nanaimo. On Thursday 23rd, all the five clubs will have a, a joint meeting at the Legion 256 on East, Al East Wellington Road. Uh, from 5 to 7, so they will not have the regular meeting. Okay. And this will be a, a meeting for all the Rotary Clubs in Nanaimo. How many people is that? All well, five of the clubs? So we're talking a couple thousand people? 3,000? 300, 300 people. 300. Maybe that's why you need an awareness well, campaign. You need some more people. But there's, <laughs> there's also cash to that. 
each member's got to bring a potential a member to join the Rotary to this event. Okay. So, seriously, why? I mean, I, I joke, but, but there is a need for an awareness campaign. You're not doing this just for fun. Uh, no, in Nanaimo, I mean, sometimes people come to you and you say you are Rotarian, and they go, what do they do? Right. Right? So we get that question asked all the time. So our PR chairs got together and said, you know, we need to do a better job telling people what Rotary does. And that's what we're here today. Right. Now, is, is there a stigma out there a little bit that Rotary is, is kind of for the older guys, like old boys club a little bit? Is uh, Are you trying to get younger people in? Are you trying to... Um... Well, in, in our club, the average age is 35, believe well, it or not. Well, that's not old. That's not I'm old. Older than that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there are a lot more younger people, and that's why you know, other presidents are going to talk about the Rotary Act and uh, Rotary Youth Exchange programs and all that stuff, right. so that we get younger members to join the Rotary Club. Okay, I'm getting a rap sign over your shoulder from Melissa. Any final 10 second? We're this close, and, that, and you're going to hear more about this because this we are close. this close, and a lot of people are not aware that we're this close to eradicating polio in the entire world. And you're There's only four countries left where it's still endemic, and you, you'll hear more about this later. And we will hear more about that later. We have two more feature chats with the other Rotary Clubs here in Nanaimo. But right now, it is time for some dancing. This is the Chinese Han Dynasty Dance, brought to you by the Nanaimo Chinese Cultural Society. Lovely dancing was provided by the. Ooh, the mic is. Uh, there's a little bit of feedback there. Well, this lovely dancing is provided by the VAU Chinese Art uh, Union in collaboration with the Nanaimo Chinese Cultural Society, and they're celebrating the Lunar New Year. This a group of students uh, are going to be performing at an event that's happening on January 20th at the Departure Bay Community Center to celebrate the New Year and to talk about this uh, event and also about the Year of the Dragon. We've got here the president of the Nanaimo Chinese Cultural Society, Angela Fang. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. <laughs> so this is really pretty. These gr uh, this group of students are here that they are 22 students who perform and they're going to be at that event. Yes. Um, but before we start all that, well, Chinese New Year, can you tell us what do you celebrate during this uh, year? Yeah, we celebrate the tradition of Chinese New Year. Actually, it's the Lunar New Year and from the old calendar. And uh, we have over 4,000 years history regarding to the uh, zodiac and uh, about the year of dragon mm -hmm. coming up. So what sort of things do you do during a Chinese New Year celebration? And in China, we always have food involved <laughs> okay. and the entertainment and the family gathering and as well as uh, our friend visiting. Oh, and uh, as I said, uh, well, we we're talking about the year of the dragon, but the Chinese zodiac signs, they, they're very popular nowadays. Yes. Um, what do they uh, mean or what do they signify? Can, can yeah. you talk to us a little bit about them? Yeah, regarding to the year of dragon, actually for the Chinese, uh, dragon is only 
animal, that's not true, that's not real. And uh, we've been put together by nine different animals. And we start from the top. The horn, it's actually, it's a deer, or we can call moose, what? it's family of deer. And uh, where the eyes, it's uh, from the shrimp, <laughs> some people call prongs. Wow. And uh, their nose is from the animal dog. And uh, as well as their uh, mustache, it's from the catfish. And the mouth of the dragon, it actually where it came from is ox. And you can say the ox and cow, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, and then the, so the scale, it's from the fish. And the hair is from lions, and the claw is actually from eagle, and the tail is from the snake. Oh my God, it almost so, seems like it encompasses all the other signs. Yes. You know, because we have it's 11 other signs, right? That's right. Right. So, um, and I hear that people who are born in the year of the dragon, there's special characteristics yeah, to them. There, it's a powerful, it a, has a leader, and it's a, we call the mighty king. And, uh, and as well as there's a lot of uh, ambitions and, uh, and very special about the dragon. It's, uh, it's mighty king. Oh, yeah. wow, mighty yeah. king. And uh, one thing that I also heard is that people in China, they usually want to have babies mm -hmm. during the year of the dragon. That's correct. Because the year of dragon, in the old saying in Chinese, and all the parents would like their children to grow up to be a dragon. Oh. Because dragon means successful ambitious and uh, confident and uh, very significant for the Chinese family to have a dragon child. Mm. So lots of people planning <laughs> to have a baby during this year. <laughs> That's yeah. very neat. So how does that reflect throughout the whole year for everybody? A year of the dragon for everyone, what does that mean? Uh, it means um, all united mm. and been together. And, uh, and then the year of dragon usually have a lot of uh, significant things happening. And so all for the uh, prosperity of the life and the happiness and the best of all. Wow, well, hopefully all of that, these good things happen this year. Um, yeah. But let's move on to talk about, uh, you're celebrating the Lunar New Year. Uh, you're having two different events. Uh, the first one is on January 20th, right? Yes, uh, January 20th on Friday night and at 5.30, we will have at the Departure Bay Community Center and uh, it will be put together uh, by the Nanaimo Chinese Culture Society and uh, sponsor also a contribution by the Vancouver Island University Art Union mm -hmm. and, uh, and VIU student group mm -hmm. as well as a community group. Mm. And, and so there I, will be a lot of entertainment happening and uh, also um, we um, have a in, an entertainment and about 20 programs and also we have definitely line dance to start with and, uh, and then as well as uh, um, catering by the an Iron Walk restaurant this year and so welcome everybody <laughs> join us. That's great. So, so and, and tickets for that are $15 and yes. they can, they're available at a whole bunch of places like yeah. the Multicultural Society. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. Uh, tickets will be available at Multicultural Society, the Chinese Culture Society, and uh, the Chinese Culture Society, now the new address at 427J Fitzwilliam Street. And welcome to come over to That's pick your ticket. <laughs> and uh, we will have uh, good food, good entertainment. That's awesome. Well, we have to wrap up, but I would like to say something that they have also another event that's happening on January 21st. That's at the museum, correct? Yes. And uh, well, to find out more, they do have a Facebook page. You can just search on, on Facebook for the Nanaimo Chinese Cultural Society and you can get all your questions answered. You can get tickets or anything like that. Uh, we'd like to thank you very much, Angela, for being here. And thank you so much to the dancers. They're really yeah. beautiful. And if you'd like to watch more of the dancers, you can go to the Departure Bay event on the 20th. Um, Thanks again and happy new year to everybody. Gung Hei Pacho. Is that Gung the right? Gung Hei Pacho. Gung Hei Pacho, Kate. Yeah. So the and, second event and is. And happy new year to you <laughs> as well, Dunya, and to you too, and everybody here.
I think we won't be able to say that again for about another year. We'll write it out while we can. We are celebrating with the various Rotary Clubs of Nanaimo on today's show. Rotary International um, is this close to eradicating polio worldwide, and there are lots of reasons to celebrate on a local level as well. Before we continue with the next interview, I just want to acknowledge that this show is um, broadcast live the initial time, and I'm starting to hear some noise and some sounds in the studio here. We have an open air studio right next to our retail office on Boban Drive, and it's always good to hear. I can hear some Chaw customers in the retail area laughing and joking. We've got some great staff up there, so uh, drop down. There might be a wee wait. Uh, take a number and uh, enjoy the wonderful service at the Shaw Retail Office on Boban Drive in Nanaimo. Back to the Rotary Clubs because they were a reason to celebrate as well. Bill DeBrendon is president of the Daybreak Rotary Club. Bill, judging by the name of your club, you guys meet first thing in the 7 morning? 7 a.m. <laughs> 7 a.m. How often are the meetings? Every week. Every week. Every Wednesday morning in our case. Okay, and you're always looking for new members. Always looking for new members. Now you, ha you have your notes in here. You've been well prepped for, for today's interview. We're going to pick up a bit where we left off with Jean and Bob about uh, Rotary launching sort of a, a, a new, an awareness campaign, a new yep. image brand. What is, what is that all about? Well, I guess a couple of years ago, the, uh, the presidents in the, in the Nanaimo area were given a mandate to improve the brand of Rotary in the mind of the average person in the community right. and with the objective of pointing out that the Rotary Wheel is the official okay. brand of Rotary. And I'm just holding up a sign now. I'll hold it up for a little while. I don't know. Yeah. I'll leave it up to Todd in the control room whether he wants to actually sure. uh, move in. But So you've got the brand of the Rotary Wheel that the most people are... The brand of the Rotary Wheel right. and service above self being the motto, which is a very old phrase which came from the original Rotary Clubs when they were created at the turn of the century. Right. And it still is true today as it was at the turn of the century. Now, you're not changing that. You're just nope. building nope. on many, that. Many initiatives of Rotary... Uh, have a temporary motto or an annual motto, a theme right. that goes with a, a, a project that Rotary is working on, but service above self is still the underlying obvious uh, goal of all Rotarians. It's one one that has stuck. Now, the, the eradication of polio is something that your club is particularly uh, involved with, proud of. Tell me a bit about your involvement with that. Well, in that photograph, I guess you've yeah. held it up already, that's one of our club members in Africa actually uh, providing the uh, the purple pinky uh, after inoculating, or I guess it's dropping uh, the uh, vaccine right. uh, in, a, in a person's mouth in one of the places where there's still uh, an epidemic of polio There's going through. Four countries left in the world. Four countries left in the world, and it's a, the one of the mottos is uh, is uh, we are this close to yeah. eradicating polio as a as a group, and it's only the second en endemic disease that uh, that um, will have been eradicated uh, after smallpox. Uh, very close to mm -hmm. happening, maybe in the next three years. Rotary and other groups have gotten together with a huge amount of resources and funds to actually accomplish this and in how long 50 it, years. 50 years. F 50 approximately years. 50 years it's wow. been going on. Uh, I've gotten the two minute queue already. Oh, so okay. I want to give you an opportunity. I, I'll just, uh, one of the things you'd mentioned was Interact Kids is a project that's particularly close to the Daybreak Club. Yeah. And we're not talking debit cards and money, Interact Kids. To all the clubs. Um, the five okay. clubs in Nanaimo have right. a complimentary club which is in uh, the high schools in Nanaimo. Okay. And, uh, I wanted to be able to point out that Interact is available to all high school kids, boys and girls, to participate with Rotary Clubs in partnership and to partner with international groups that might go to Africa. Right now mm -hmm. in Nanaimo there are three youth exchange students that are members of the Interact Club that are in different high schools in Nanaimo right. that are able to participate and partner with the adult groups, uh, go to their meetings and learn yeah. about working in their communities. And, this uh, sounds like a mentorship. Tremendous opportunity. A, a mentorship relationship? Yes. Yeah. It is. And it's one of the initiatives of Rotary to work with children, to work with young people here, to help people over there, and to help themselves here in this community as okay. well. One minute left. Okay. <laughs> Anything Lots else? to say. Daybre Daybreak <laughs> Rotary Club. Anything else you'd like people to know about what you do with your group. First of all, how big are you? How many uh, members? We have just under 50 members. That's pretty big then. Yeah. Yeah. We've sustained that. We're probably about 49% uh, oh, women. Wow. And I always like to point that out, that yep. a lot of people have thought that Rotary is a, a men's club uh, right. and that uh, that's all there is to it. No, it goes to kids and to all types and ages and sizes in, in, in the community. Okay. And finally, last word, anything you'd like to let people know that we haven't already. We still have one more interview for Rotary on the show today. I think the other Rotary presidents are going to go to more detail about what we've done, what our objectives yeah. are. Uh, I always like to stress that Rotary is a partnership creating organization. It 
picks up on pure charities and uh, looks to participate with those charities. Um, I'm actually going a bit early so I can go out and do a fundraiser this evening yep. just with a bunch of friends and volunteers and uh, we hope to be able to okay. generate a thousand bucks. Thank you okay. for everything that you do in the community through Rotary. We'll have more on Rotary later on in the show. And a reminder that uh, Rotary Week in Nanaimo is February 23rd to March 1st. Lots of celebrations, I'm sure, will take place here in the city during that week. Well, we teased you a while ago at the very beginning of the show with Elise Paquette. And now, without further ado, here she is again with the Elephant Shoes song. Find a boat, drive a car, go traveling afar. I hope I never need to get another pair, cause it'll break my little heart if you ever were to tear apart. Everybody said it's not a proper shoe. They might just slip right off and walk away from you, but read my lips when I say elephant shoes. Read my lips when I say elephant shoes. I hope you say it too. Look, this is Elise Paquette with Elephant Shoes. Lovely, thank you. And thanks for coming in. I know you're not feeling great. Everyone's yeah. fighting off. Maybe I'll call out. If anybody wants to run a little cup of water over, that would be awesome. Oh, that would be lovely. Um, now, Elise Paquette is the daughter of the late, great Jerry Paquette. Most people on the island and off the island as well know Jerry as the brains and mastermind and talent behind Rainco Studio here in Nanaimo. Unfortunately, he passed away in May of 2010. I think every musician I know um, has some connection to Rainco Studio. I'm going to do a little call out. Even my dad, he's a pianist. He made a little wee CD <laughs> at your dad's studio a few years ago. Now, Jerry told me once that he uh, gave up a potential very successful touring life as a musician to stay at home and be with his family. That's you and your older brother. Yeah, yeah, he had apparently, he had a tour booked and he was ready to go and take off and play music. And then my brother was born and he just... <laughs> and messed everything up. <laughs> and he's like, you know what, I'm a dad now, I gotta stay home, so yeah. The sense I got is that he never had any regrets no. about doing that and was able to continue. I think someone has your water, we'll just bring it right on in. We're casual oh, around thank here. You so much. And thank um, you. you can just hold it for the whole interview okay. and if you need to play again, I'll take it back. Oh. Um, but, but he really made a name for himself in the studio. And mm -hmm. I find it interesting that he made CDs for so many musicians um, and you don't have one. I know. <laughs> I know, well, I don't know, growing up he was very particular about like, it had to be perfect type thing, so every time I'd be like, Dad, I, it's time, I really want to, you know, get these songs out there, yeah. start recording, and he'd be like, when you're ready, Elise, when you're ready. 
So finally, we started recording and um, just before he got sick, so I got about five songs done and then when he passed away, it kind of put a hold on everything, so yeah. the plan is to finish it. And you're having to sort of uh, get together some finances and actually purchase his whole studio that is well, starting to not, be disassembled, I yeah. guess? Or? Well, my mom's in the process of selling off his gear and stuff, and so it's kind of a hard thing, but my boyfriend is in the process of buying some of the gear to set up in our apartment, so yeah. we're going to have a place to do some recording and yeah, finish the CD. Thanks for being so open and sharing well, that part with us. Now, I asked you off camera how big of a part music plays in your life, and you said, well, actually, you've got an application to school to get your welding ticket? Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're going to make know. your own metal guitar. I don't know. Um, well, I grew up with music and my, with my, dad, my dad's studio and stuff. It's just been a part of my life, so I'll always have, I don't know, I just don't feel like that's something that yeah. I, like I, I will always have that for me, so right. I don't know, I think welding will be fun. Right. So and kind of two careers, welding and trades, and, and, and you're never, as you said, going to live without music. Yeah. So I don't know, I, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Are you <laughs> performing much these days? Um, a little bit. Not as much as I'd like to be performing, but um, hopefully I'm going to get Luke, my boyfriend, and I have been practicing music and playing lots together, so hopefully I'm going to start playing with him a little bit. And you're, and you're not shy. I mean, your dad took you. You're looking around because he's here. Luke's here for support today. Your dad would take you out when he would perform because he'd perform locally as yeah. well as run Raincoast, and he'd bring you up on stage and, and put you in the spotlight, so you're quite comfortable here in the spotlight. Um, I'm really nervous, <laughs> that are really actually. Right now. I'm really, I feel really red, and I feel really nervous, but no, yeah, he had this, he would do this a lot at shows. He'd so I miss my daughter out there anywhere and then he'd call me up on stage and totally unprepared and freaking out and nervous but yeah so he kind of yeah warmed mm. me up into it a little bit you must miss him a lot. I really miss him a lot yeah it still really hasn't hit me because yeah. it's just been gone by so fast but I can't imagine I mean and you probably still get phone calls and, and still things about about the studio because he was he was huge yeah he was huge, still huge on the island yeah and do you feel a bit of um you're carrying his musical name on through the generations through oh, your family. Oh man, I don't know. That's a big. That's a big task. Big responsibility. Big responsibility. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. Um, I, I get the sense to. you can do it, though. I, I hope to. That would be my end result goal. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. We're going to ask you to strum us out. We're going to take a short break here on the show. Um, we will be back with more soundscape music from composer Peter Jack Rainbird. Mm. Do you want me to do one more sip for you? And in the mm. meantime, Elise Paquette will sort of strum us through into the commercial break, and we'll be back with more here on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh And now, back to the show, only on Shaw TV.
familiar. There are a few places you may have heard it. This is Peter Jack Rainbird. Thank you so much. Um, the first time I heard your music, I was at the community park in Parksville. I had my kids in the park, and we hear this music. Is that in my head? Is that for real? And you wander uh, over to the beach, and there you are underneath the gazebo, just playing and creating for the atmosphere. And also Tynamara, the grotto spa there. Um, I think everyone goes into a deep relaxation with this kind of music. I'm holding the mic to my mouth, and I don't need it, I've just realized. Now, you have created a CD, I but have, yes. um, it, that was sort of all happened by accident. I'm going to do a little bit of a sure. brag list for you, That's and then um, you've been playing music for around 20 years, and you've had the opportunity to play with notables like Tony Levin. Am I pronouncing yeah, the name sure. properly? Yeah, Tony Levin, yes. Um, who played with Peter Gabriel and Pink Floyd, a Peter Lockett, who plays with Bjork. How did you end up here? Uh, in Canada or in British Columbia? Well, here on the island in Canada, you're, you're from <laughs> you're from the UK. Sure, I was living in Toronto, and then I'd been working and playing and touring, and, and life was great. And then I got offered an opportunity to come to British Columbia for a break and just to see another side of Canada. And so I took that with just the intention of taking a few weeks, and I just fell in love with BC and the people here and the way people just you know, uh, conduct their communities, the music here, and yeah, and that was a couple of years ago. It was only supposed to be a few weeks. So. And, and you, you told me that you didn't have any ambition. You were taking a sabbatical. You were yes. on a break. How did the music <laughs> then find you again? Yeah, I, so when I came out for a break, yeah. I then just decided to let the music breathe. And I think for most people, when they've done something for a period of time, maybe a decade or so, yeah. you want to just let it settle down for a while. Right. And then I just started to explore music again as a personal exploration of sound and emotion. And then this is what emerged. And then I just felt compelled to share that with people publicly, civically. And then from that came just all of the wonderful events and support. And it's it, been great. It seems to be taking off in the last yeah, couple of months. Yeah, it just has a life of its own. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different sensation from maybe pushing to make something happen to suddenly right. feeling like pulled and compelled into contributing and getting excited about what people are doing in the different towns. Now so. you've said this. What is this? <laughs> How do you describe this music? That, and I, I, I'm going to describe it, not that we hear, but that we sure. experience. It gets to the core. It really does. I don't know. You know, I, I, I asked a friend last night. I emailed a friend in Boston, and I was like, we've, we've got this thing. We're going to be on the show, and they're going to ask what, what genre it is. <laughs> and so they Googled, and the, the names were endless in terms of genre. And so... I just leave it open and, and people decide, they, they hear different things in it from uh, soundscape stuff to, I mean, I was brought up on opera and Motown, yeah. so I don't know if that's in there at all. I had this, my parents were crazy opera fans. Yeah. All our dogs were named after operas. Okay. Yeah. And Rainbird um, is your real, Peter Jack Rainbird's yeah. real name. We're going to clarify that. We will, sure, Everybody just for asked. the record. Yeah, yeah and I said I would admit my middle name is Daffodil, so great. we're we'll from the same great. era, maybe. Yes. Sure. <laughs> uh, now, scripted versus mm -hmm. structured versus spontaneous. Right. Can you repeat the exact thing twice? How, how structured is it? Yeah, well, one of the challenges about going in and making a record and then going and performing it live, right. for me, one of the most defining questions is, how are you going to do it live? Can you do it live? And, and the music started... And, still, and live up to what people right. expect from hearing it recorded. Because then people want to take that home and experience it themselves, right. either at home or in the cars or on their iPods. Yeah. yeah. So um, that creative challenge then just brought about the evolution of the music live. So playing in Parksville, Nanaimo, Tofino, was the process of exploring the music, and then it was informing the choices creatively. So there's structure, but there's spontaneity inside it. Kind of like life, you know? If it's all spontaneity, nothing's happening. Too much structure, it's no fun. What, so. One of the questions I had, and we've got about a minute left, sure. I know you've got followers all over the world, and I'm, sure. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, what, what do you think people get from your music? And then on the flip side, what do you get from the people who are getting something out of what you do? Oh my goodness. It's an exchange. It really. is an exchange. And it's always an unexpected and wonderful exchange. And there's always magic and great stories. And people's stories are as unique as my experiences with the music. Mm -hmm. So it, you, can't, you can't pin it down. I don't think you'd want to pin it down. You right. just, just, you know, just let it go. Pinning it down would change it, ruin it almost. Sure, you don't yeah. want to put your finger on it. You know, yeah. there's something that, and, and everybody has their own experience. And so it's just a joy to hear their stories and what they have garnered from the music and then what they're able to bring back in terms of encouragement and, and support.
I am getting the rap signal. Yeah, I wouldn't be me and it wouldn't be a show if no. I didn't ignore it at least once, which okay. I'm going to do a little bit right now okay. because <laughs> you're that guy. I'm going to be I'm real quick. Guy. People come up to you and say, you're yes. that guy. And, and they go, you go, yeah. And they go, oh, okay, thanks. And then they and run then they off leave. and they don't even know what guy, but you're that guy. It happens, yeah. I'll be in wherever, the supermarket and, or the store or the coffee shop. And, they'll, and I don't know who that guy is. It could be another guy. <laughs> I, just, I just say yes. And once they've had that confirmed they're yeah. off they're, right. that's it the end of the conversation but we're assuming they mean that guy I think under the gazebo in the parksville beach that guy okay we're gonna oh hear one more time from that yeah. guy who is peter jack rainbird here he is once again live for us on the show thank you for coming thank you, Whoa, as i kick your gear around no, okay, okay. stress that might have existed is instantly gone. That is Peter Jack Rainbird Unravel is the name of a CD that he has just put out in cooperation with Tynamara Resort. You can get the CD through his website. More information on Peter Jack Rainbird through his website, peterjackrainbird.net. Just because I haven't said the name enough times. We're continuing now with our look into the various Rotary Clubs around Nanaimo. Bob uh, Moss is president of Nanaimo North and Sucha Olek is here. He is the president of the Lansville Rotary Club. If it seems like I'm suddenly talking really fast, it's because we're going a bit long so far in the show, so we're going to condense things. Um, I'll start with you, Bob. You're, you're president of the Rotary Club North Nanaimo. Uh, your club is particularly interested in a youth exchange program, is that right? Absolutely. Ryla is the name of it. Well, actually, Ryla is a is, uh, second program, but perhaps I could talk about the youth exchange because sure. it's a program that we're very proud of in our club and, and all of the five clubs in Nanaimo support it. There's two uh, areas of exchange. One is the year-long exchange and the other one is the summer exchange. And uh, high school students apply for that program and it's an international exchange program that is hosted by Rotary on each end. And so it's a wonderful opportunity for students to uh, get to see another country and spend a whole year uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, on the other side in a student yeah. situation with another family. Wonderful opportunity. I'm going to come back to you for the RILA, which is a second okay. second program, and bring in Sucha, who's mm -hmm. been very patient today. Thank you. I know you've been here very a long welcome. time. Busy man, president of the Lansville Rotary Club. You've been working with Georgia Avenue Elementary School for the past four years. That's right. Yeah. What have you done and why that school? Why a school? Well, that's a school that we thought we could uh, take an active role in and that a school that needed our assistance and so over the past four years we funded a literacy program buying books for reading and arithmetic as well mm -hmm. and now we've moved on to funding their breakfast program which started with buying them a stove last year Wow! Uh, and this year in fact this morning we made another donation of $500 to uh, support their breakfast program every morning there's 20 to 25 students from grades 1 to 7 that are provided a breakfast mm -hmm. because a lot of students in the inner city especially don't get a good start by having a breakfast and through various circumstances yeah. they don't have that and it's kind of turned itself around in the sense that we went in there thinking that they need our help and this morning when Shelley Green the principal who's done an incredibly good job there yeah. came and spoke to us we realized that they've been helping us to fulfill our goal of being 
having a good role in the community, being uh, able to do something meaningful. Yeah. And it's been very, very rewarding for us. And That's so the Lanceville Rotary Club. I've been given the one minute cue already. You guys oh. have been so patient. Yeah. Quickly, RILA stands for? Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. And that's something that happens on a local level? In a district level, so typically okay. down in Washington State for all of the clubs in our district. And it's aimed at uh, high school students again, and it's to encourage leadership abilities. It's a three-day program, and it uh, brings in students of the same age from around our district. And it's a wonderful opportunity, again, to, to expose the students to leadership skills and motivational speakers, and they come away very energized by all of that. Best way, if people want to get involved in the Rotary Clubs, best thing, just Google Rotary. Find, those, find the club, find the site. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I know we've been cut a little bit short and you've been very patient here all day. I'd like to remind, not all day, but you know, for a good portion of the afternoon, I'd like to remind viewers that uh, Nanaimo will be declaring Rotary Week February 23rd to March the 1st. I'm sure we'll have uh, some more discussion on Rotary Clubs and what they're doing in our communities during that time. The show is produced, the show that you're watching right now, in our studio on Boban Drive by a crew made up of mostly volunteers and a few staff members. And if you want to be a part of it, you can check the credit roll at the end. You'd be sure to follow us on Twitter at ShawTV underscore CVI. We have a YouTube channel as well. You can find past episodes of the show. I'm frantically getting the wrap. Friend is on Facebook. La, la, la. Once again, here is Elise Paquette. Thank you, gentlemen. Here's Elise. <laughs> frantically, the arms are going. But tonight, I you belong uh -huh, to me Although we're apart You're a part of my heart And tonight you belong uh -huh, to me Way down along the stream very, very sweet it would seem Once more Just to dream in the silvery 